If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Welcome to the K Files uh, this morning. Um, guess who we have? We have Sergeant Tender with the Edgecombe County Sheriff's Department. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me. And of course, Linda is with us uh, today. So, this is a good day. It is a good day, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. Uh, an arrest was made in the Johnny Cunningham case. Yes, ma'am. Last night. Last night. As, and, and you were up till all hours, I yes, suppose, trying yes, to get this were. settled. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, Lyndall? Sure. Uh, it was, we were just talking about before we come on the air, it was four weeks, I mean, yeah, four weeks ago today. Yes, sir. One month. That, that you were to be on the show, and you called me at about 7.30 and said, I, I'm sorry I can't be here, but they've, uh, somebody's just reported a body mm -hmm. being found, and I've right. got to go do that. Yes, sir. So can you um, can you kind of tell us? Uh, I know you were just here on Saturday, last Saturday. Yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate that uh, as part of the fundraiser. But can you just kind of tell us from that day um, what you can tell us? I mean, obviously, I know there's you know things you can tell us, things right. you can't tell us. But just kind of walk us through what you can. Last after last week, we received some more information, and me and Detective Johnson followed up on that information. And we were able to discuss with the district attorney and able to get a warrant. Yesterday evening, Lieutenant Sherrod with the Nash County Sheriff's Office, along with the Rocky Mountain Police Department, assisted in the arrest. And we would definitely like to thank the efforts of Nash County and the Rocky Mountain Police Department for assisting us in that arrest. So he was arrested in Nash County? Yes, ma'am. Uh, that would be 42-year-old Michael Palmer. Michael right? Palmer, yes, sir. The suspect that was listed on Facebook. and. That we released there you go, right the there. subject right there. Now, I, I know that uh, probably the biggest question that people have, and, and it's not always something that, that y'all can get into right away before a trial, but can you tell us what, uh, whether Mr. Cunningham and Mr. Palmer knew each other or what, you know, what 
Just tell us what you can about that. that. They did know each other. This was not a random act of a random stranger coming up and doing this. This was a known person by Mr. Cunningham. They, okay. they had a relationship. Um, Mr. Palmer is a mechanic. He's, he has what he calls Palmer's Automotive. So he is a mechanic. So, so he, so, to, to just to clarify, because people are going to run wild with rumors as they always do, Mr. Palmer was not one of Mr. Cunningham's uh, construction workers. No, sir. He was a mechanic. Okay. He worked on vehicles. You know, we felt like the whole time, this whole month, um, Sergeant, that you really didn't know, didn't know who did this at all. We felt like, you know, so have you known? I'm not sure about that. Cops always know a whole lot more than they. Uh, they do. They good, it's they, amazing. They good, they're, they're good poker it's players. It's amazing how they keep Very good so poker secrets. Players, so. but, but, you know, everybody says, oh, they don't, you know, everybody was saying they don't have any idea who did it, and I don't know if you'll ever be caught. That's what you want people to believe. You, you don't. An investigation like this, you don't want to lay all cards out on the table before oh, sure you get somebody not. arrested, and that's how it works. But you have to, you have to realize, folks, you do not want to hamper an investigation at all. Because what do we want ultimately? We want the killer to be put in jail, so uh, to to be convicted, and and so, you know. We know that, that we can't, there's some information that we just cannot be privy to. Right. And we understand that. So we're only going to ask Sergeant Tender what he can tell, or if we step over the line, he's going to tell us that uh, we cannot know that. Mr. Palmer got a criminal record that a lot of drugs, some larcenies, some, some breaking, vehicle breaking in. Yes, but sir. I mean, a lot of that, like uh, what I call small time crook stuff. Right. Is there anything in uh, that I missed in there that I don't know about uh, violent history wise? Or? No, sir. I, you, I, you see the same criminal histories we do, probably. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, what was some of the criminal? Well, history? I mean, like I said, he had a lot of drugs. He got a lot of convictions for drugs, uh, a lot of larcenies, and a lot of vehicle break ins. This guy liked to break into vehicles. I mean, a lot of them. So, uh, four or five pages worth. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, he was definitely known to law enforcement over the years. Right. Um, all right. So, uh, great job on that. Thank you. I know y'all were. I know y'all yes. were, were working on, on this uh, nonstop, and it's good to see um, the sheriff's. I mean, the both sheriff's office and the and the PD. Yes, sir. It was working together on this. It was a great effort on all three agencies to get him in custody. Because you you put that out. Y'all put that information out. Was it yesterday afternoon? What about? We put it out yesterday afternoon, right at five o'clock. Right at five o'clock, and then y'all y'all had him. He was arrested by ten o'clock that night. Great job. I'd also like to thank the citizens that called me, and gave us information. That that helps out a lot. When citizens get involved, that's when it starts rolling quicker. That's right. Well, I mean, that's what that's what we're doing here. That's what the whole thing is yes. about is to try to get people to um, to participate. Right. Like the general always says that you know it's 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 not just law enforcement that keeps. Uh, Law and order and the rule of law. It's the it, it requires the community. Yes, sir. It does without the community. All right. So um, we're very happy about that. Um, you are here today, though, to talk about another case. Yes, sir. And and I hope that you you still got that in mind. I, I know you've been busy. Yes, but, sir. Uh, okay. So uh, we've talked about this before, but I, I just wanted to, to to bring it up again and put it in front of people's. Uh, faces again, so yes, you can see. Uh, Dalvin Redman was, um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about him? Dalvin Redman was found in a field, the uh, subject on your screen. He was found in a field in Canada off of Ellis Road back on October 25th, 2018. He was found by a farmer who was disking up the land, or I'm not sure what he was actually doing, but he was found deceased in the field. Doing farmer things. Yes, sir. And he found um, Mr. Redman out in his field. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we are off. We are off the reward in that case, and and we're trying to um, get information. His his brother was also uh, killed, right? Yes, sir. Is that 
is did y'all have arrested somebody? Yes, we've got an arrest in that case. That case is pending trial as we speak. Okay, so so no, um, as far as you can say, no connection between the two. Uh, of, right, as far as I can say, just I, a tragedy from yes, from sir, Mrs. Mrs. Redmond uh, for their mom, I guess. Uh, two lost two sons, pretty close together, right? When it was within a year, I believe, year and a half of each other. Wow, if that, losing two kids within a year. Um, That's pretty bad. All right, so um, I, I, I just wanted to, to, to talk about uh, y'all, Edgecombe County has, how, how many unsolved homicides do y'all have right now? Like three, two? If you want to count Mr. McGray, Mac, yes. Mac, I promised I'd never mispronounce him. Matt Gray. Matt Gray. If you want to count him, which I think he's probably dead. So there's Steve McGray, Dalvin Redmond, the two from Pine Tops, and then Stoshua Lynch. That's what I can remember off the top of my head. Right, that's, yeah. that's the five open cold case homicides we are working at this time. And just to let everybody know, we still work these, even though they're years old. We don't stop working them. We get information. We get tips all the time. We follow up on it. On the Dalvin Redmond case, we did do a search warrant on a vehicle. We do have a suspect. That subject, that suspect has fled the jurisdiction of the state of North Carolina. Um, that's all I can say about that. But I just wanted to know, let y'all know that we do have a suspect. Well, that's good. And he's he's fled the jurisdiction of North Carolina at this time. Is, is that one of those things like you always see on uh, old TV shows where they tell the guy, "Don't leave, don't leave town." But he decided to leave town anyway. <laughs> we didn't have to tell him that. This this gentleman left on his own. Right. And just disappeared. Uh -huh. But there's wow. but but if you ever develop enough information for an arrest, you can put out a yes, sir, I would warrant on him. Fugitive right? warrant, we can go anywhere in the United States to right. get him. Okay. With the US Marshals. The US Marshals and, and the local agencies wherever he would be at right. that time. I got you. Okay. So so um I also, uh, am I, I, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but uh, Stasha Lynch, did, his brother got killed in Rocky Mountain. Too, I believe so, like, yes, sir. So um, uh, just a lot of tragedy. Yes. To go all the way around. So you you were you were up all night working on the um, on the on the Johnny Cunningham case. Yes, sir. What um, tell folks like a typical um, you know not not any specifics, but I mean like like what um. What is your, what is your job like? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what? Tell people on a, in a typical day, what does Sergeant Tender do? Wow, um, I, I can do anything from running polygraphs. I'm the polygraph operator for the sheriff's office. I do pre-employment polygraphs. I can do criminal polygraphs. I run the sex offender registry, so I wow. handle every sex offender in the county. In all major cases, I'm the juvenile detective. I'm also the juvenile sex crimes detective. Good so. grief. You do pretty much do it all. I'm God not all of it. You wash, you wash the bottles and, and make lunch, too, right? No, sir. So, so, the, so the, 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 the sex offender registry, we, we've had you on here a couple times yes, to, sir. to talk about that. Um, they have to, when, when they're made a sex offender, they are, you know, when the state, through conviction or whatever, and then yes, the state sir. puts them on the registry, they have to tell you where they live at. Yes, sir. They have to report to the sheriff's office their address. They can't live within a thousand foot of a school or a daycare. They're not allowed to babysit children. Um, if it's their own child, if it's their biological child, that's different. We get a lot of phone calls that this, that a subject is babysitting a kid, and you come to find out it's their own child, and hmm. your own child, you're not babysitting. You're taking care of your child. Right. Um, but if it's not your biological child, you, you're not allowed to babysit. You're not allowed to be alone with a child. And that includes like wow. extended family, like if it was your niece or nephew? I mean, it has to be your child? It's, it's got to be a biological relative. Okay. It can't be like if you married somebody and they got a niece two times removed. You know, mm -hmm. That doesn't count. I would imagine that some of these folks might marry for that reason. Wow. I hate to say, you know, oh, married to have right. convenient yeah. victims <coughs> laying around. All right, so. So, but let me ask you a question. Yes, do y'all still do roundups? Yes, ma'am. Sex offender roundups? We do. That's when we get a lot of warrants on them. Like, say, we, I have to get a warrant. If they don't report to me in person within three business days right. of their new address, I get a warrant. And if we get a lot in, an, in the time frame, we'll go out and start looking at them. And you mentioned the U.S. Marshals, and that's 
that's who helps us a lot on these sure cases. yes they help yes. out they're very yeah. i went on one with nash county one time and it was very enlightening is that anyway. is that your way of saying they were looking for you yeah i'm telling you <laughs> so, all right so so the uh sex offender moves and does not tell you where he's moved to right is that's that a, what what level of Crime it's a that. class F felony to not report. Oh, really? Just for just not telling you where oh, he's at right. for, for wow. a day? I mean, or, or well, not a day. They've got to actually they move. Got? They've got three business days to notify me of their new address. And that's if they move. That's, you pick up your stuff and move from here to another address. Right. If they work out of county and they're out of the county for, let's say, eight days a month, they don't have to notify. But once they hit a 10-day mark of being out of the county, then they've got to say, hey, I'm going to be in Raleigh for 20 days a month and I've got to have that address. So they need to, um, I mean, I think viewers need to, again, I mean, I say this all the time, understand that these are folks that have been convicted. They are convicted in, in, in court. In a court. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not, they're not accused, you no, know, sir. it's not, not, a, not a suspect. Right. I mean, these are folks that have had their day in court. They've either pled guilty. Or found guilty. Or found guilty by a jury or a judge. Yes, sir. And so um, the keeping track of them, I don't, feel violates any, you know, every once in a while you'll get somebody who will say, you know, that, that such strenuous uh, surveillance is violating their civil liberties or whatever, but I mean, they have been found guilty yes, they of have. whatever crime they're, they've done. Yes, so, sir. So, you know, I, I don't, um, I, I think we should, um, uh, a lot of them should probably be in prison where we would know right where they're at, but I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to ask you that. No, so. So what's what's next for Mr. Palmer? He he'll he'll be arraigned, right? Yes, sir. He'll have his first appearance, which is when he just goes in front of a judge. They'll read him why he's charged. And that's usually within a couple of days. Yes, ma'am. Within 72 40. hours, he'll have okay. his first appearance. After that, he'll sit in jail until court and. and because this, in North Carolina, there's no there's, there's no, no bond, bond for, for first degree murder, right? Right. Okay. And no parole either. If, 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 if convicted of first degree murder, there's only two possible penalties, right? Death, Death and life. Death and life. Right. So that's something North Carolina did right years ago. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there used to be, uh, I've written stories about folks that commit first, years ago, would commit first degree murder and be out in 10 years. 10, 15 years. Yeah, you know, so, and, you know, I mean, we're, and we're not talking about manslaughter, you know, we're not talking we're about, talking like, about murder. Where two guys getting a fight and one guy kills the other guy and, you know, right. whatever. We're talking about first degree murder that, that the elements of first degree murder, premeditation, deliberation, right, however right. long it takes. I've heard the DA say that a thousand times, but, I mean, if you, if you plan to kill somebody and then you, and, and you get caught, I mean, you do that and then you get caught in North Carolina, the death penalty is rare because even if they get the death penalty, it's, 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 it's rare for it to be carried they're, out. They're more than likely to die um, of natural causes. Of course, right. However, I still support the death penalty because even if they're never executed, they spend their life on death row, which is not as pleasant as general population. Right. So, all right. So, uh, just to recap, folks, uh, Johnny Cunningham was was shot dead in his driveway a month ago. Yes. And then um, y'all worked on this case uh, all month. And then um, yesterday you announced the suspect, Michael Palmer, and um, you you arrest you five hours from when the announced you, from the announcement With, was made. He mm -hmm. was in custody at 9:45, 10 o'clock. So about five hours. Yesterday. Now let me let me ask you this. Uh, uh, it, it's not always done this way that you announce who the suspect is before you have him in custody. Correct. Right. I mean, a lot. M most times, law enforcement wait, especially in a, a murder case. They're going to wait till they have the guy. Right. But I mean, was there? I mean, what was what was that situation where you just you knew it? You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and we, look we, for him. I mean, what? We needed the public's help. That's all I'll okay. say. That's what I was trying to get out of. So so y'all y'all had the y'all had the warrant. I mean, you, you'd already ch I mean, you'd already announced that he'd been charged with murder, so you, you charged him. Right. And then you just need to know where he was at. So right. I assume, I'm just assuming, I'll just make this statement, you don't have to answer, but I'm assuming you got the public's help. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Public, like I said. Do you see how, Im I said that, Sergeant, do you see how important your help is? 
Do you, I mean, I, it's just so important. It's one of those sayings, if you know something, say something. Right. It's, um, you live in this community, if you don't want somebody that's accused of murder running around near you. Right. You, you want him exactly behind bars well, well, where... Yes. You, you know, it's funny you say that. I, I live in Spring Hope, and um, there was a, a murder in my neighborhood yesterday. Right. Uh, a man killed his mother. Or you know uh, is accused of killing his mother. Right. Although I mean I I know the guy and I mean the guy was a menace to the neighborhood. The, I I moved a block away. My wife's the librarian and the newspapers across the street from the library. So we moved a block closer. We bought a house. Okay. So it's really convenient for us that that our house we actually live a block from where we work at both of us. Right. Except for when I drive here all the time. So. Um, this guy <clears throat> was in prison for uh, assault, alphabet assault, right? Assault with a deadly, hey, assault with a deadly weapon, intent to kill, yeah, all those serious, letters, serious. right? So he he got paroled in 2017, and his family from Durham had bought a house two doors down from where I used to live. That's a really nice family. They were a really nice family. One of them was a truck driver. Um, you know, I mean, they were a really nice family. But then the brother gets out of prison and moves in and caused nothing but trouble. The whole, I mean, like, my wife was in the yard one day and he came up to the yard and, and started, uh, like, um, making moves at her or whatever, you know, and she's like, I'm married. And he's like, I don't care about that, you know. And then there was a lady across the street who act, he actually assaulted. Um, the cops got called there nine times. Mm. Right, wow. nine times the cops got called to this house in a in about a year or so, a couple of maybe 13, 14 months, and they tried to the family tried to uh, involuntarily commit the guy, and when the cops showed up to do that, he got in a fight with the cops, and more cops had to come, and they took him off, but then he came back, right, and then he chased the guy, he chased his brother down the road with a knife, and then they got him, and then he came back, and you know it's not, it's I'm not knocking law enforcement because all y'all can do is lock him up. You know, it's the court right. systems that, that let them out, you know. So so nine times this guy had some situation where cops showed up because he was being violent. Nine mm -hmm. times in, in, a, in, a, in about a year. And then they get another call. And I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I guess I should have specified this. I talked to Chief Ken a lot yesterday. I'm not sure if it was the ninth time yesterday or the tenth time, if you know what I'm saying. I don't, right. You don't I, know I, I should have specified that, yeah, but they went there yesterday, either the ninth time <laughs> or the tenth time, mm. and the mother was dead in the bedroom. God. Wait. You know, wow. so it's, and, and, and she was such a nice lady. I mean, like, I, I you know, it, it's, so anyway, I went out of town yesterday morning to, um, to visit my father. My, my father's ill down, in, well, he's old, down in Sanford, and I went down there to visit him, and a uh, water line breaks in Spring Hope. The entire town of Spring Hope was out water for, for a whole day. That'll drive somebody nuts. Crazy. And then th there was no gas anywhere. The whole, right. you know, I mean, the whole I town's imagine. out of gas, the whole town's out of water, and then there's a murder. The one, the one day that I decided to go out of town in two years, mm. all that happened yesterday. But I guess what I'm, the whole reason I'm telling this whole story is that there were a lot of times, and, and there were actually, um, there were a couple incidences that this man was involved in that I know about that nobody told law enforcement about. Because mm -hmm. it may, really, because they were kind of scared. Scared. Of but had they spoke up, maybe he would, right. maybe he That's would exactly be in right. jail at some point and he wouldn't have killed his mother. Right. Well, it is you know? so important. So that, that was a long problem. way to get to what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that people need, people need to tell Law enforcement. They, you know, they, they have to. The public can play a vital role in, in cases, folks. And we do want these people off the street. Absolutely. So I, there's I, the number, 406-6736. Call it. Um, call the Sheriff's Department, um, whoever you want to call, but call and give a tip. It will be anonymous. It can be anonymous. Yes, it is. Um, so um, please do so. We have this avenue now. Uh, with the team cold case, with the K-Files, we, we definitely want you to participate. If you know anything, please, it is, it is kind of your, it is your duty, folks, 
for the, you know, to other citizens to do this. So anyway, thank you, Sergeant Tender. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we um, appreciate it. Uh, you know, we had a fundraiser two weeks ago. You were on the show yes, during sir. that, and I and I appreciate that. Uh, we talked about uh, Mr. Cunningham, and and um, you thanked um, Jeff Sherrard for for his part. Yes, yes he sir. seems to be mixed up in like everything that happens around here. I, I was driving through Rocky Mountain one day with one of my kids, and I saw a lot of police activity on. I can't remember what street it was, but I was. I told my son, I said. He's, he's a photographer in training. Right. And I said, anytime that you see something like that, you got to take the picture because you don't know. That picture may be nothing or it might be a triple homicide. You don't know what right. it is. So we, we're taking, I'm taking pictures. We're sitting there taking pictures and, you know, out comes Sherrard out of the house. Right. So in the middle of Rocky Mountain. So, I mean, that guy's everywhere. And the fundraiser would not have been successful as successful without Jeff. That yeah, Jeff sure. he played a vital here's role. Here's his, his buddy right here. There's um. That's how we got Muddy the Mudcat here. It is. They, they are uh, best for, uh, fishing buddies, uh, which is kind of weird on Muddy's right. part. But anyway, when we come back from the break, we've got a special interview that Jeff and Captain Staten with the police department did during the fundraiser, and I want folks to see it. Um, folks, when we come back, we're going to show this video. Uh, Please watch it. It, it. Captain Staten talks about a, uh, a murder in his family and how instrumental that was to him as a law enforcement officer and all that. So it's a really good video. And then when we come back from that, we're going to do the unidentified and talk about a, a body that was found in Franklin County years ago. Okay. So thank you, Sergeant Tender, for yes, being sir, thank here. Thanks for, what, thanks for what you do. You're welcome. And thanks thank for putting up with us, and we'll be back. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Captain Staten, tell us what it feels like as a family member when people have not known, nobody's paid the price for killing a family member for a long time and finally they're brought to justice. What, what does it feel like? As a family member, as a family member uh, one, being in law enforcement and having those relatives constantly you know, look at you, they, they, they question the job that you do on a regular basis and everything you can do to help resolve other problems. Just when you can't bring closure and answers to people, sometimes that, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel a little bit uneasy. So as a, as a family member, you feel like you're trying to do everything you can, um, but you, you also have to remove yourself from that case because you can't participate investigate those things because you don't want to taint the case or bring any uh, negative attention to it. So we got a lot of other professionals to do their jobs, unfortunately. Uh, work with uh, detectives and you know, processing the evidence and over time in cooperation with uh, witnesses or locate witnesses or the, uh, other organizations who uh, was able to resolve that case. So it can be a little difficult. And I bet the closure for the family was really, really important, wasn't it? It was. It was. It was. It was. And I, I just want to comment on what Captain State's talking about. Um, unfortunately, with the profession we're in, we, we have to 
give those notifications and, and, and talk to the families right much. Um, but when it's different, when when it's been a, a cold case or anything like that, and it is when it's a, as the general calls them hot now cases, um, the sheriff's office had the pleasure last year through fighting crime with a tip with fighting crime to um, solve a missing lady out of Rocky Mount that had been missing for 15 years. Um, and when we went and talked to that mother and told her that we had finally got a, enough information to make an arrest, we found the, the remains. That is a whole different feeling than anything that I can describe to you than it is when it actually just happened to be able to make an arrest. Because um, that lady had, can now sleep easier at night, um, lay her daughter to rest, where for 15 years she didn't have that pleasure. I mean, if I may add, just thinking about it, we had a lot of cold cases that were not being talked about, seen, or being reviewed, other than what uh, Mr. Linda LK was doing, the K Files, when uh, Fighting Crime was trying to do it, uh, or Catherine trying to actually do it before I bring attention. So it's just wonderful for this organization, this, this, this board, this whole cold case team, to try to bring that awareness and attention. So now we get more tips than we've ever gotten dealing with cold cases specifically, uh, which is, is helping us get a little bit more energized to do things and maybe bring in more resources just by being a part of this team. WRAL was here earlier today, uh, and they actually met a lot of your officers, and they talked to them as a matter of course. And, and before I forget, by the way, Jeff, thank you so much, you and your team and Cap State for what you all have done with us. These two guys right here, by the way, were responsible for a lot of the, the giveaways, the work, the groundwork, especially the police and the sheriff's office's emphasis on today. So before I, because I don't want to forget that, because at the end of the day, I'm going to start thanking the two big guys, but <laughs> you know, I, like everything else, uh, I, I realize generals don't really do it. It's the, it's the sergeants and the soldiers, and you guys have done that, so thank you so much. Thank you. But anyhow, this is uh, you guys in your years of service, in your years of service, you all have watched the swings of what has happened here in Rocky Mountain and other places. You've seen are we on the rise? Are we on the rise as a city? On the rise as a team? On the rise as a collective team in our in our city in our uh, counties? I, I think so. I think because of what Team Cold Case has brought to to the public out front, as Captain State said, I think that it's just a matter of time that. Um, the tips are going to come in. We're going to solve more cases. So, to me, I think that we definitely have put ourselves out there in the forefront to uh, make ourselves better. Um, and I think it's just it's going to grow from here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're looking to try to bring in other law enforcement agencies in smaller areas, in smaller rural places, um, other cities like Allen, and Grona Rapids, and, and Wilson to try to join this uh, team. And we're working more together. Last couple of years than I've ever seen as police, sheriffs, and other entities uh, to work towards a common goal of, of bringing awareness and trying to resolve old cases. We're uh, always together on fresh cases of trying to find other uh, things that's happening right there. But I, I think we're going to rise for some great things. In this well, first of all, I appreciate what you all are all doing. I appreciate the fact that we're that we are in fact working the better that we're together that we are starting to move in the right directions as we go. And again, I, I'm, I'm extremely appreciative of your work. Uh, any parting comments, first from Eugene, and then I go from Jeff. You, and you don't have to And then Jeff, and then of course you get that. I just want to say, we, we feel truly blessed to have the law enforcement we do in our area. Uh, I see what's going on in other areas of the country, and I think, wow. I mean, it, it's really brought to light to me that we, we trust y'all, we, we can count on y'all. When we call you, you'll be there. And beyond that, you're so professional and you truly care. I, I've heard so often today uh, people speaking from the heart. I mean, you're doing this because you want us to be safe and you want this to be the best safe city and, and for crooks to go away and put out the word that you're not welcome here. Um, we look out for our own. We, 
we love our law enforcement and we support you. So thank you so much. Um, I just want to tag along Cat State. I, I agree 100% with what he says. Um, it, I've been here for a long time, so has he. And we are now working more together with Rocky Mount, Edgecombe, Tarver, or Wilson than we've ever done to try to solve some of these cases. And it's because of what Team Cold Case has done. It's about what Lyndall K has done on the, on the show every Thursday. It's about what Cat's doing with fighting crime. Um, and, you know, as long as we can continue to keep that mentality where we all in it for the common goal, I think that we're going to solve more cases than they've ever, we've ever solved in the past. My last part of the comment would be, you know, as Chief Housel said earlier, we want to improve the quality of life for the folks in Rocky Mountain and just the people who travel through our communities and just by doing the service of police work. At the same time, you know, when a homicide takes place and somebody you know, is not knowing where they are, you don't bring that closure to that family. You know, we try to do every day is, you know, build trust with the public, build relationships with the public, and want them to be able to count us to do the best job we possibly can and want to get the most cooperation as we can with citizens. And only to do that, we got to engage those citizens and not take for granted reference to because cases are in the past, they're not important. I believe the team cold case and the efforts that they have done, the work that they have done, and just the uh, agencies and the partnerships that we are continuing, I think we can do great things. And I'm just happy to be a part of that. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim.